Good evening. I want to begin by thanking some of the, those who have made Prineville such a success today. There are too many to name all of them. First, I wish to thank the city council members who donated their time to focus on policy decisions to move this city forward. Janet Hutchison, Teresa Rodriguez, Jason Beebe, Gail Merritt, Patricia Youngman, and Jeff Papke. It is not a thankless task, but does require hours of personal time commitment to serve the public. Next, I wish to thank the city manager, Steve Forrester, and the department managers, and all the staff who do the work to make the city function and function well, particularly Liz Schutte, Eric Klon, Darla Roden, Josh Smith, Chief Dale Cummins, James Wilson, Zach Lampert, Lisa Morgan, Matt Wiederholt, and Kelly Caulfield. This is a great team. Prineville is a very efficiently run city doing remarkable things. It is a great place to start and grow a business, raise a family, enjoy the land and become part of the community. As the oldest town in Central Oregon, we've weathered good times and bad. The decisions we make today are made for the long-term haul. Good and bad news. To list all of the accomplishments this past year would be too extensive, so I will highlight, highlight those most significant and must apologize to the managers and departments for not including all of their successes. First, I'll start with the police department. The police department uh, addressed police and a dispatch. Significant progress has been made in establishing the new police dispatch building that is strategically located out of the floodplain that will meet the state's earthquake standards and will be large enough to house our critical first responder responders for years to come. The city was able to purchase the building for the department and the new equipment to allow officers to better perform investigations and increase safety. Also, the department implemented a new testing procedure for drugs to protect officers from fentanyl exposure. They increased their presence in driving under the influence and influence, and influence enforcement and number of, dr of driving under the influence and influence of drugs or alcohol arrests has increased considerably. So my message to the community, don't. From a community relations standpoint, through productive efforts, the first Shop with a Cop project in Crook County was successfully carried out, benefiting needy children and their families. Officers engaged in random acts of kindness to local citizens during Christmas to humanize the relations between the officers and the public. Also, they formed a committee that brought the community together to host a softball tournament for the Hagen family their fight against leukemia. Lastly, the department increased its Facebook fo followers to over 16,300. Challenges for the upcoming year include completion of the new police dispatch facility by early fall, looking into creating a street crimes detective to assist with habitual crime issues in Prineville, and research into a drug canine to assist city drug arrests. The department also is looking into a solid quality assurance program for dispatch, as well as training opportunities and more opportunities for community involvement and 911 education. The railroad had another remarkable year. It has developed a locomotive maintainer program creating an additional revenue stream. With the internal skills, work can be done in-house as opposed to contracting out. <coughs> saving the department significantly, $237,000 last year through the maintainer program, as well as other work done by staff rather than contracting out. This includes installing and rebuilding switches, replacing caps on the Madras Highway Bridge, and constructing a, the Gardner Road signal gate assembly. They purchased 800 ties for a switch and, and a tie project this coming summer, to be done by our city staff. While saving money through in-house efforts, they were successful in recruiting additional business 
with additional storage contracts. This year ended profitably again for the fifth consecutive year. There have been and are opportunities for increased use of rail and several businesses are currently looking into Prineville for expansion. This may necessitate consideration of expanding the rail footprint to accommodate those and other business. Rail, the Rail Commission, the Railroad Commission, is evaluating opportunities to meet the new demands. New challenges are compliance with additional state regulations requiring two-man train crews, along with additional Federal Railroad Administration regulations and increasing costs of operations. Also, aging rolling stock that includes locomotive, equipment, and vehicles will need replacing and updating. Replacing 700, pardon me, replacing 800 ties is helpful, but the target is actually 2,000 per year. So we're working toward that goal. Meadow Lakes had another successful year. Its balance fund reached another high, $471,440, while manager Zach Lampert was named club executive of the year by the Oregon Golf Association. Meadow Lakes continues to be the primary fundraising venue for nonprofit projects in Prineville. The golf course donated 345 rounds of golf to local charities, a value of nearly $16,000. To create new, fun experiences for golfers, the four golf, so golf cycles were purchased for rent on the course. The major change Meadow Lakes this year was it the leasing of the restaurant operations, which should save the city approximately $100,000 over the next biennium. The significant effort will be the renovation of irrigation system, which is now over 25, actually 26 years old. The city hired irrigation consultant Greg Bayer, and the project is underway. Rounds of golf are up slightly, and profitability increased. Longer term, this is of concern as younger generations are not engaged, or at least as, as engaged, in golf for recreation. So creative efforts will be forthcoming to entice and encourage use of the facilities. This is also the fundamental justification for discounting golf for youth, youth to help them appreciate golf as an enjoyable recreation with friends and family. Now for Public Works. Public Works has been on their A-game no surprise. Their most visible achievement is the completion of the Elm Street Bridge, which should shrink the 100-year floodplain and improve traffic flow. Also, the city was awarded $3 million that will be directed toward the Downtown Street Improvement Project in cooperation with ODOT. The project will include a pedestrian safety, beautification, improved lighting, and street signal upgrades, among other steps. Safety improvements will also be made at the Combs Flat and Laughlin intersection. Also, the Rails to Trails project design is underway with construction expected in 2020-2021. The Rails to Trails project is to convert a portion of that now unused rail to a walking trail from East 3rd Street to North Main. Projects in the hopper include reconstruction of the 10th and Main intersection, developing funding for the extension of Combs Flat Road and Peters Road through to La Monta, as well as upgrade to the floodplain map. The floodplain issue involves planning as well and efforts to design and funding to reduce floodplain risk to the lower end of Ochco Creek from Harwood Bridge to Gardner Road are a high priority. The Aquifer Storage and Recovery Project, ASR, is underway. The, the $12,700,000 project, funded by the data centers, will provide water to Prineville for the next 30 to 50 years. This environmentally friendly project is drought and climate change resistant and is expected to put Prineville on the map as a water secure area to develop. The 2014 water legislation is finalized with water rights secure that will serve Prineville for the next 50 to 100 years. Aging water lines have been replaced and water rate methodology has been updated 
to more equitably charge for water use. During this next year, the ASR water project should be completed and more water lines replaced. The Crooked River Wetlands Project continues to gain recognition and appreciation. The aeration system at the treatment plant was upgraded to a greater efficiency. Wastewater rates were held steady from 2018 and two large wastewater interceptor lines were installed. Projects for this coming year include a new, new wastewater screen and upgrading the irrigation system at the wastewater treatment plant. Two grants were received to develop a master plan for Barnes Butte Recreation Area and to develop a community-wide master plan with Crook County Parks and Rec. The public have actively participated in this planning and are encouraged to continue to be actively engaged. The last area of effort for, for public works is power production. Prineville is working with Ochico Irrigation District and Crook County to develop a hydro hydroelectric generation on Bowman Dam. This is currently in permitting process. Prineville is also in infant stages of developing a large biomass generator. Grants to fund the feasibility study are currently in process. There is no intent to spend public tax dollars to fund the venture, though when completed would be a leg legacy project for the city. Streets are in relatively good condition. However, our intent is to reduce long-term maintenance cost by improving the pavement condition to 83. Long-term maintenance funding continues to be a high priority. Then to the airport. There have been a number of successes at the airport this past year. The United States Forest Service Air Base is under construction. Above ground fueling system was completed as was the asphalt repair and $1,200,000 aircraft parking apron. $400,000 in grants have been approved for runway projects along with a five-year CIP with FAA to include $7.5 million of airport funding. Challenges for the airport include coordination of multiple projects split between city and county, balancing staff coverage and business, recruiting aviation-related business, and aircraft fuel sales, while still achieving a profit for operations. Now to planning. Planning had another successful year, processing 152 applications, including 72 single-family dwellings. Another 437,000 square foot building at the data center was approved as the 1 million square foot building is now being completed. Trail systems, uh, trail system easement, easements have been approved along with the updating of land use codes and the city accessory dwelling unit code. The department updated the comprehensive plan, um, the department updated the comprehensive plan along with housing analysis. They are working with Downtown Strategic Planning Committee, Chamber of Commerce, Downtown Business Interests to form a Downtown Association run by Downtown Businesses and Building Owners. The Department continues to work with air quality including DEQ and EPA to maintain satisfactory air quality standards which have been excellent over the past three years. Updating the air quality action plan and ma managing three separate grants from DEQ while maintaining a high level of service, including a nearly 100% availability rate for our citizens and customers. Challenges for the department include urban growth boundaries, balancing development with long-term community goals, including economic development and quality of life amenities. Affordable housing is always on the radar screen along with needed infrastructure to meet the needs is always a focus. The department also focuses on managing blighted properties along with land use code violations. The department works with Public Works in identifying potential floodplain reductions including the acquisition of properties for development. To finance, congratulations to the finance department this year. They succeeded in being awarded the pres 
prestigious CAFR, C-A-F-R, which is Consolidated, Consolidated Annual Financing Report. Excellence in financial reporting for the first third year in a row. This is the most prestigious award issued to municipal finance departments and is usually re reserved for only large metropolitan cities. Not only was the reporting excellent, but the results in the re financial reporting were excellent as well. The city switched from an annual budgeting process to a biennial process. Also, the department implemented asset management software, updated control and processing manuals, and updated internal operation manuals and policies. Four million dollars of funding was secured for the public safety building at 3.15% interest thanks to excellent credit and proper handling of funds. While the city borrowed $4 million, it paid off $1.5 million in debt for a net increase in debt of $2.5 million since last year, minor in the overall scheme of things. According to Portland State University population reporting, Prineville grew by 210 residents this past year for a current total of 10,220 residents. Our current debt per capita is $2,146. That is actually quite minor debt when you consider Public Works has built nearly $44,500,000 worth of infrastructure in the past 10 years, or $4,354.20 for every resident. In addition to the buildings, streets, water and wastewater systems, golf course and railroad already in place. The city budget grew, and this is remarkable. The city budget grew from $30,254,000, pardon me, $30,254,408, repeat that one more time. The city budget grew from $30,254,408 in 2016 to $69,664,395 in 2019. Challenges for the future are anticipation of growth in income and need for budgeting purposes, keeping up with rule changes and succession planning. Information technology, upgrading and installing radio softwares and technology for the city, 911 police department, as well as new public safety building has been the major focus. Technology, for the 911 center and police building in the new building is in process. While all technology improvements for the jail move were planned out and completed with no issues. Their challenges is including technology span systems, the expansion of technology systems while maintaining legacy systems and converging timelines for multiple projects onto human resources. Major accomplishments were implementation of the NeoGov software for onboarding new hires, enabling them to be more productive on their first day. Employee handbooks and policies were updated and safety training was increased. A citywide safety inspection resulted in six, 17 found items identified and corrected in 2019. The result was the reduction in accidents in, and Prineville receiving the Silver Safety Award for 2019. Council goals and related achievements. Now many have already been identified above. In addition, however, the city manager successfully negotiated an annual user fee with Facebook to fund a Crook County Fire and Rescue, with, which resulted in payments allow, allowing CCFR, Crook County Fire and, Res and um, rescue to fully staff satellite fire stations in Juniper Canyon and Powell Butte. Matt Wiederholt negotiated a lumber storage agreement with Brightwood Corporation at the freight depot resulting in a new $10,000 per month revenue stream. We continue to work toward aquifer storage and recovery and the vision of converting wastewater to industrial water in conservation efforts. Prineville was selected by Baker Technology Institute for a truck driving heavy equipment school for Central Oregon with startup date in the 2020. 
We continue to work with partners Crook County and Ochco Irrigation District towards building hydroelectric generation at Bowman Dam. The city continues to work with new and expanding businesses wanting to expand into Prineville because of rail benefits, which is really the result of building a community culture and environment that is safe, healthy, and business-minded. That and the infrastructure and financial strength of the community places us in a great position moving forward. We have become a city where the brightest and best want to come to work. We do have high-level challenges. We need to develop a strategic plan and policies for anticipated incremental growth in both franchise fees and pro property tax income growth as 2027 will soon be upon us. 2027 is the year the first Facebook tax exemption rolls off. We need to have a community vision with collaboration moving forward to facilitate best use of our resources for the whole community. We need to recruit and retain business that create more family wage job opportunities and economic diversity. There will eventually be a downturn in the economy and diversification of our economy will help stabilize our community. We need downtown revitalization. We need long-term funding for public safety operations, infrastructure, streets, and PERS. While the new Elm Street Bridge will help, we need to develop and implement a floodplain management plan for Ochoco Creek through the urban growth boundary with a floodplain overlay to protect existing properties from flood risk. We must prioritize and find funding for the Combs Flat Peters Road Extension Project. We must help facilitate education for training a workforce for the future, focusing on the development of CTE, that's career technical education, and to trade jobs. We need long-term certainty of electrical power, water, wastewater, for continued large users. We need renewable energy development that includes local generation opportunities that leverage management and environmental sustainability of our local natural resources. Lastly, and certainly one of our highest priorities, is succession planning for the next generation of local leaders. We need them to be ready to ensure the city remains prepared and positioned to provide the high quality of services our community members have come to expect. It will be theirs as well as our responsibility to protect and sustain the culture of Prineville that has been so dear to us. Thank you for the opportunity to serve you.